Disclaimer. I am not a mechanic, AMP, AMT, AME. I am not a CFI, CFII. I think you get the point. If you have any questions, concerns, or etc., seek the advice of experts. I am a private pilot who owns a plane and is trying to give back to the aviation community by sharing my own experience in aircraft ownership. Please refer to your aircraft's POH as every aircraft is different. And remember, we're all in this together, so be safe out there. Alright guys, so I'm excited to uh, finally make this video. It's been a little while. Um, things have been kind of crazy or whatnot, and I wanted to take a few minutes to get some stuff together so I can show you uh, a few things that are going to save you a ton of money. Um, with the new 2020 requirements through the FAA regarding ADSB, things can get rather expensive. So right now you have uh, the requirement coming out in 2020 where most general aircraft, mo most aircraft period, will have to have installed ADSB out. Now ADSB out um, is different than ADSB in because ADSB out is think of a transponder, right? So GPS locations, there's uh, amazing technology in there. It really is great. Um, however. It is required and there is a cutoff date, so not everybody is enjoying it as much as, uh, as, much as I do, I guess, because the technology behind it is amazing. And yes, I did have to spend quite a few bucks on a transponder for my aircraft. However, what it has given me is um, well worth it. So one of the things that I will go into in a very... Uh, in a future video that's going to be put out very soon is what you can do actually with your ADS-B out. However, this video is actually for ADS-B in. So I know that most pilots out there have seen either their buddies or have gone through and noticed that there are sales and different companies out there that are putting out ADS-B receivers or ADS-B in receivers and what these guys do is they pick up on the signals from the aircraft and also the towers on the ground and these receivers are able to receive both weather and aircraft positioning information for separation so it's pretty amazing that we're able to actually see some of the stuff that an air traffic controller is able to see what does that mean it means that we're better and safer up there than we were ever before. Another reason I like the ADS-B out. So, anywho, uh, again, this video is about these guys here, the little receivers. These are not a requirement by any means. I haven't heard anything in the works where they would be. However, I would strongly suggest everyone to get one of these in the cockpit. The more we know about where each other are, uh, in the air the safer we're at. So as you can see from here though uh, this particular setup uh, is one thousand ninety eight dollars and ninety nine cents to get traffic and weather that's pretty steep. Now this is the most expensive package because it's just that. It includes the Stratus 2S ADSB uh, receiver for iPad and the Four Flight Pro Plus plan. Um, so that's why it's a little bit more expensive. It's a package deal. However, when you look at the other options there, the standalone receivers like the Garmin, the GDL39, that's $900. Just the ADSB receiver for the iPad, because um, that runs the ADSB uh, Gar or Stratus 2S is just for um, the iPad because they're linking that up with their um, software. For flight, uh, which is a great software package. Garmin's a great software package. However, that's restrictive and that's still $900. Um, another popular one is the Dual, the XGPS 190. It does the same thing as the others there for the most part. Um, and then you have your options to save a little bit of money where you have a wired option where you don't have a battery on board that powers it remotely. Uh, Bluetooth, non-Bluetooth, 
so on and so forth. So if you look down, the most stripped down thing that I could find, at least on Sporties, but however it seems um, this to be the price on most websites, is about $600. So what do we do? I have figured out by searching the interwebs that a company or a group called Stratux, <laughs> kind of a play on the Stratus, has put out information and software to run a Raspberry Pi 3 to do the exact same things as the competitive brands out there that are offering the ADSB in technology. However, as you can see through the price points here, even if you get the single band, the least expensive out there, which will show most of the traffic and weather, is under $100. Now, the one I'm going to show you that I built is the more expensive uh, version for $129.66. However, it does not need to be that expensive, as I'll show you in just a second, um, if you don't need a GPS unit. And if you don't need a uh, battery pack. So it's pretty amazing that you're able to do this for under $150 when the other ADSB in receivers start at $600, $500, $600, I believe. So what I'll do is I'll show you my setup. I'll add all the information below so you can make your own. And they've made it so easy. The Stratix group, they've done a great job. Um, so let me show you the build, and then uh, you can take it from there and add this to your aircraft. So here's my solution. This is the Raspberry Pi ADSB N. So as you can see, it's only got a few components going on right here with it. We've got the Raspberry Pi 3. This has the built-in Wi-Fi, so you don't have to buy any other components. The last time I checked uh, on the internet there through Amazon, the Raspberry Pi 3 was going for $35, which is great. This case uh, is no longer available. However, there is a replacement case, which is a little less expensive. Um, a few people on Amazon are still selling this case. However, I'm going to post the one that's currently in stock up on the website. You have your dual band antennas, and in here you can see both antennas down there as well. So you've got the antenna and the uh, antenna receivers, rather, I apologize, uh, the 1090 and the 978. Um, so both frequencies of ADS-B. Um, this right here, the Raspberry Pi 3, just connects through a micro USB. Um, you can run this Raspberry Pi all day off of a battery pack, uh, which I will include in the description and also on the website. Um, usually I plug this in uh, when I first jump off the airport there and start flying, and it is good literally all day long, um, just by the battery pack. I know that sometimes, uh, if I forgot the battery pack at home, or if I have some issues or whatnot, and I just don't remember to put it in the plane, that if you use a cigarette lighter adapter, a good cigarette lighter adapter uh, for USB, you don't want to use a cheap one or it'll burn off your system, um, you can stick it into the dash of your plane, of course, check to make sure that your plane can handle the amperage taken out from that USB. But what I'm getting at is if everything falls in line with your airplane, you can use one of those adapters and just plug this in and it will power the Raspberry Pi indefinitely. The Raspberry Pi can run on very low power with this setup, so you don't have really anything to worry about other than that adapter being compatible with your airplane. Lastly, you need a memory card, which is on the back right there just fits right in there i went a little overboard with mine just because i had an extra 32 gig card you don't need anywhere close to that size because the only thing that you're going to be running on here is the software is the stratic software um, i will include uh, it's great because the people that put this together are actually producing a 
SD memory card, a micro SD memory card with the software on it. So all you have to do literally is pop that SD memory card into the Raspberry Pi, turn it on, and you're ready to go. Everything will power up, it'll connect, it'll start receiving a signal, and you're good to go. Now one quick caveat with this is that you're going to be using uh, an iPhone or an iPad or something to that effect. If you are using a device that does not have a GPS built inside of it, I know I had an older iPad that did not have a built-in GPS, then you need an external GPS. Now, my iPad, as you can see running back there, that has an internal GPS. It's a cellular, uh, you can tell. If it's cellular, then we'll have that uh, internal GPS. That's usually how you can tell. Um, but I still use the external GPS uh, just to make sure that I'm constantly connected with that satellite. I like to know where I'm at in the sky. And it will show all the data um, if you do not have a GPS or a GPS on your phone. However, it won't show your current position. That's the important part. You want to make sure that you have separation and you're not going through water. So, right here is an example of what it will start to look like once it's connected. What you'll want to do is connect it to the Stratix network. Uh, this is, creates its own network. Uh, so all you do is just go to your Wi-Fi settings, connect to Stratix, and this will show uh, automatically. So to confirm that this is connected, I'm going to try to do this with, oh, hello with my hand looking through the viewfinder here, what you're going to do is search for devices and just click there and you'll see ADS-B connected provides GPS and ADS-B okay so even if you don't have the GPS connected to here it will still send out the signal um, a, a phantom signal so this right now is not connected to a GPS However, if it is connected, it will send um, correct data to this. Regardless if it has an uh, antenna or not, it will still show up uh, GPS. So something to keep in mind there. So right now I'm in my house. Um, I have lots of walls and whatnot around me, so the signal isn't too great. As you can see, I'm not connected to any towers. However, just a few minutes ago, I was picking up some traffic. There was a few aircraft going to Richmond, and I was able to see uh, their direction, their altitude, all of that type of jazz. Now, when you connect to the tower, when you're either closer to a tower, oh, there comes somebody, um, or you're in the air. As soon as you get into the air, everything will start uh, jumping up on your screen and you'll connect to at least one or two towers, but on the ground in a house <laughs> especially, chances are you're not going to connect to a tower. So um, a big uh, uh, downfall to not connecting to a tower um, is you won't see weather information. So weather information is going to be put through those towers, the ADS-B receiver is going to receive it, and you'll have all of your information put on here as you were, uh, as you would uh, connected to uh, normal internet there. So, since this guy's there, I can click on him or press on uh, him with my finger. Um, he is apparently 25,850 feet. He's probably, yeah, he's coming down there. Um, heading 43 degrees, speed 478 knots. When you're in the air, cool thing is is that uh, using four flight at least I know that's the only experience I've had um, they will have audible uh, hazards um, come up on here and it will tell you if the aircraft's too close to you if it's going to be an issue so on and so forth so I just connect uh, my iPad or iPhone to my cell phone or to my Bluetooth and that way if I'm flying along and I'm checking out gauges, looking at my GPS and the aircraft, so on and so forth, I can still listen out for those um, audible hazards. 
So terrain will work on here. Everything um, that the mainline ADS and receivers do will show up on uh, on here. So it's it's pretty awesome. It's a great way to save a ton of money, and the software that the Stratix people have put out, they are continuing to update. So I actually believe the updates are put out more than the regular Stratis uh, or the competitors. It's it's pretty amazing because you have quite a few people looking into the background software of this. So uh, this is a great way to save tons of money on something that can be extremely important to your safety uh, while you're flying. It gives you weather information, traffic information, uh, a whole plethora of info in the air that you normally would have to either pay for, yes it's totally free, um, or you would have to pay up front for a more expensive receiver. Since that guy just showed up, we'll click on him real quick to see if we can get his information. Uh, so it's American Airlines, 31,000 feet, so on and so forth, and I just lost him probably because I moved the actual unit. He'll pop up there in just a second. So you can see these antennas are actually doing an amazing job, even in on the ground, inside a house, um, with a lot of... Um, stuff blocking the signal there so pretty amazing like i said i'll leave all of the um, parts in the description that you need which is basically the case the antennas the antennas come together um, so i think there's if you get the gps unit for this six things in total that you would have to buy um, the raspberry pi just screws down you just literally plug in the two antennas um, insert the memory card, insert the GPS, which literally just plugs in by USB, and turn it on. And that's it. I was going to do a video where I actually put this thing together, but they've made it so easy. <laughs> um, you just order the parts, put them together, and it takes at most 10 minutes. And that's just peeling off the protective covering that comes with that. That takes the majority of the time. If you can plug a USB anything into a USB port, you've got this. Um, so, really easy. Like I said, I'm going to add everything in the description and on the website. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments or uh, post it on the website and either the blog or send me a uh, question directly through it. And that's it. Once you get this, which most of them, if you have Prime or next day delivery you're good to go all right guys stay safe out there because we're all in this together see ya